I hope you're all doing well and that your families are doing well. Are you enjoying your research class thus far? I hope so. Research is a fascinating area, and there are a lot of research ter terms that we need to know this week, so I thought a little video might be in order. This week we're going to talk about different types of sampling, and sometimes we sling these terms around and we just expect for everybody to know what we're talking about. But it makes good sense just to pause for a moment and be sure we're all on the same page. Think of the different ways that you can gather a sample to collect data from, let's think of it as two big groups. When you're doing a quantitative study, we have random sampling and we have non-random sampling. Underneath each one of these large categories, there are different subgroups of types of sampling that we can conduct. Let's talk about random sampling because random sampling is the golden standard in research. However, in the social sciences, it's often difficult to use random sampling. It's not like we can go into a school and random sample students and try some new intervention or random sample classrooms that we're going to offer some new type of curriculum. We just can't disrupt someone's education because we want to try something or we want to gather data and we want to use that golden standard of random sampling. The teachers would look at us like, who do you think you are? So we don't often get to do random sampling in education, but still we want to learn about this great sampling method. If you obtained all of the students who were taking a certain history class and you wanted to know something about the uh, effectiveness of that history curriculum and you wanted to measure that with a history test, well, let's just pretend that we've got lots and lots of research assistants to help us. And our first step would be to list all of the students who are taking that uh, history curriculum and using that history test. And let's number those students and then begin the random sampling process. Now in the olden days, you would have to use the table of random numbers that's found on the back of your textbook. But fortunately, we have computers to do random sampling for us now. And we would enter our list of all of the students and their test scores, and we would ask the computer to pull out a random sample from all of those students. And uh, we would compare their test scores or whatever it was that we wanted to measure. Random sampling, it's just random. I noticed that a lot of students use the word random sampling or that phrase, and I don't know if it's because they've heard it's the golden standard or if it's just a term that they're familiar with, but we're not often going to be able to do random sampling. So just keep that in mind this week as you approach your activities. If you were doing random sampling, that means that you've numbered all of your participants, the whole population, and you've randomly selected by using the table of random numbers in the back of your textbook, or you allow the computer to do random selection for you. It's a great type of sampling, but it's not something that we can usually accomplish in education. Then another type of random sampling is stratified random sampling. Let's pretend we're going to conduct a study of finance managers, and perhaps we're rating their effectiveness, and we want to know if their effectiveness has anything to do with their level of education. When we're breaking down the participants, we want to note their different education levels. So we're going to stratify our sample. We have some finance managers with a high school level of education, and some have an associate degree, and some have a four-year bachelor's degree, and some have obtained a master's degree, and you might even have a few finance managers with a doctoral degree. So to use stratified sampling, we have to have a good sample of participants in each one of those areas, or strata. For a random sampling, you need an even larger bank of participants. Cluster sampling is when you already have some groups that are intact and you're like, oh, I'm going to study this group. Maybe you can't study every fireman in America who participated in a particular type of training, but you know of some specific fire districts that all use the specific type of training. And so those districts are a groups that are already put together. And so that's a cluster for your study. Perhaps you're going to study a cluster from a fire district in Virginia and a cluster from a district in Georgia because you know they use that same fireman training. Cluster sampling is an option. And if you're taking all of the districts that use that fireman training program and you randomly select districts that you're going to use as your clusters, then you have random cluster sampling. Look at what it's possible for you to do with your study. Now let's look at that other big category of non-random sampling. Often in our social sciences, we use a convenient sample because it's just convenient. That group is already intact, it's convenient. Let's pretend Ralph, a dissertation student, really wants to study teacher's confidence in integrating math across the curriculum. 
Ralph is passionate about integrating math and showing its usefulness in everyday situations. And so Bob, one of the other cohort members, says, hey, I work at a large K-12 private school. My principal, the board, whoever we have to get permission from, they are absolutely willing to let you survey your teachers here about their confidence in integrating math across the curriculum. And Ralph's so excited, he's found his convenient sample and he's gonna use teachers at that private school uh, as his sample. And maybe Ralph can even use some other private schools to enlarge his sample. Anytime you can get more participants in your study, you're giving yourself greater statistical power. So I always say that if you can increase your sample size, please do so. But it's a convenient sample, it's convenient and it's easy. Purposive sampling is when you have a certain group that you wanna study. Think about you purposely want to choose those individuals. Uh, you're wanting to look at teachers who've had some experience or something in common. So you're purposely gonna pick those teachers to survey to be in your quantitative study. And that would be purposive sampling. I hope this video helps a little bit on picking your type of sampling uh, that you're going to use in a study. Mm -hmm.